Hey everybody, to the Fox 11 Talk Now Social Lounge. I am here with Layden Meester from Hello. Making History, and of course you know her from a bunch of other stuff, Gossip Girl, you've done music, Broadway, but what's it like being on a TV comedy? Uh, it's great. It's the best. I've been, uh, I've been having a lot of fun. I, I think it's because like I was a huge fan of everybody before I worked with them, but also being on set, it was like every joke you tell, I don't know, I think it's just about having fun and like making each other laugh so hopefully we get everybody else laughing but yeah so so fun a new unique experience yes it's very nice and light and you play paul revere's daughter deb mm -hmm. now deb. when <laughs> deborah <laughs> no, De deb deb, <laughs> deb. um <laughs> when, colonial name. when you get a call that you got this character what i mean like do you do like quickly brush up on American history because let's be honest all of us could use a good refresher yeah, on American history. This is a period in time when I, that I find very fascinating and I feel like was like kind of like hammered in like in school. I certainly don't know everything there is to know obviously but um, but because we are not only time travel sci-fi mm -hmm. wise not taking it too seriously we're also not taking like the historic element of too seriously either we're just sort of like having fun and being loose about it right. obviously because you see sam adams and john hancock are two main yeah. characters that time travel a little bit with us and um they're although they are incredibly intelligent um learned men they are also like drunk toddlers yeah like, i mean they're funny in a sense yeah <laughs> like they they like they in modern times, they're absolutely, like, incapacitated. Like, they right. can't do anything. They're like, where is that music coming from? The speaker. <laughs> like, they don't get it. But, obviously, you know, it's just kind of a joke about, um, you know, colonial colonial men, the founding fathers. Right. But, but for the character, I, I, I got to be honest, I didn't do, like, a ton of accurate uh -huh. research. But there really isn't that much to know about Deb because... Uh, Paul Revere did have, like many people of his time, lots of children, and uh, more than half of them died. Um, I saw that he had like 13 kids. He had yeah, like nine daughters. He was working, or maybe he wasn't working. <laughs> I don't know. He was having fun. <laughs> Somebody was working. Yeah, because he had like people. nine daughters, and Deborah actually was a name of one of his daughters. Right. I, I don't really know that there's much more to know. I know that, you know, in the show, it's kind of sad, actually. She has a sort of strained relationship with her father because mm -hmm. he's like, you do laundry, and you cook, and you're going to get married, and that's it. Um, and realistically, like, I'm playing somebody my own age, but you would probably have been, like, 16, which is, like, you just need to be, like, texting <laughs> at that time. You're not supposed to be getting married. So, um, so it's interesting. She doesn't feel like she belongs in that time period. Right. She's very, like, educated beyond her station in life. She's taught herself different languages and music and... Um, and she's also, you know, she's pretty empowered because she was throwing axes, she's yes. shooting guns, yeah. she's doing a lot of things that... Yeah, she's the heroine of the show. And she jokes about, you know, women, you know, in the past compared to the future. It makes yeah. a lot of... Yeah, and when we time travel within, like, you know, within the show, even, like, we go to Chicago in 1919, I'm talking to Al Capone's wife, and she's like, when we got married when I was 16, and I'm like, they still do that? <laughs> and she's like, yeah. You know, because it's so recent. Right, exactly. And yet it hasn't really changed, you Right. Know? And now we got we got one question from Alfonsina. She asks, um, "Can you describe Deb in three words?" Uh, let's see. Um, childlike, uh, wild, and um, 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 naive. To a sense. To a sense, like yeah. it's weird. I don't know. That's hard. It's not a good. <laughs> Well, I mean, she's naive when they come back and they have cell phones and they're taking pictures and she's kind of like, you know. She also believes that Dan has invented everything. Right, that's true. She's like, oh, like your phones are here. They, they have your television. And, and like, Dan is your, yeah. your Dan is my boyfriend, boyfriend from the, the future. Show. From present day, he's right. the future to me and he comes back in time and because of our relationship. And he's dropping like all these quotes from movies and one-liners and yes. he's really kind of sucking you in. You're like, wow, how did you write that? And he's actually just quoting like Titanic Yes, yeah, exactly. Song. He's like singing every hit like love song right. from the past like twenty years, and yet I'm just like he's the best. But the truth is that he also just has the mentality of like a modern man, which is he's willing to speak mm -hmm. politics with me and treat me as an equal, and so I'm I'm all the more in love with him. And making history is really a show about like what we would all do if we would go back to the past, like which is like get a girlfriend and lie to her about everything. Well, I mean, <laughs> <to a> sense. <laughs> But we'd bring back like cell phones and we'd be, you know, we Yeah, I don't even know what you would think. Like, I right. don't even, I mean, I think that at that time, maybe because of like a, I don't know if there was like Telegram, but I certainly mm -hmm. people were writing letters, but like the idea of like, 
vast information, it just seems like they couldn't even conceive of it. Right. Like, I think that maybe they could conceive of a car and possibly a telephone, but, like, internet, I don't know that they right. could think of It's a hard that. concept to grasp. So, like, yeah, when they're writing, like, the Declaration of the Independence and the Constitution, they can't really think, like, oh, there's going to be, like, internet. And right. there's going to be, I mean, in this in this case, like, automatic weapons and so <laughs> forth, you know? It's like... That's true. One automatic weapon could do a lot of damage in the past. Right. Right. They were, like, talking about muskets, like they're mass-killing machines because they shoot a bullet a minute. (laughs) (laughs) Now, Danny has a question for you. If you could live in any time period in any country, where would you want to live? Um, I would want to live in this time period in this country right now. Or just, like, extend Obama. (laughs) (laughs) it's like the last eight years just keep them going because i was really lucky i mean my entire 20s was spent during obama's administration and uh you know i I don't know i don't know what we're headed towards but um i don't know if it's going to be hard to beat it's not going to be beaten lots of people are writing in asking questions um let's see uh favorite costume from the show so far well i can tell you I'll tell you my favorite, and I'll tell you my least favorite. The, my favorite was probably um, just comfort-wise. We do go, coming up there is a two-arc uh, episode about going to 1919 Chicago and, like, hanging in with Al Capone, and we get to wear, like, dapper, zoot suit, like, fashion. Mm-hmm. And I wear, like, beaded dresses. It's, like, kind of a flapper <laughs> look. We go to speakeasies, and I get to, like, shoot a Tommy gun. Um so that was really fun, but the most comfortable thing I would say is living in, uh, or like going back to the '90s. We go to the when fashion was really good, um, where there's like acid wash jeans, zip, zip off jeans, yes, and yes, and like because you don't know when you might need shorts. Exactly. <laughs> if it gets too hot, you always have that option. Yeah, um, and then the least comfortable for sure is the the corset and like dress trying to like do Mm. pretty much anything include breathe or speak or think and the show has you doing tons of things i mean you're shooting guns you're riding horses i mean yeah i'm hunting you're hunting how fun is it just to do all that stuff you wouldn't really have the option to do yeah exactly i think it's um she's kind of like the because she's like that she has also this like weird superhuman strength where like we've even put adam pally like on a pulley so that it appears that i'm pulling him out of a hole like (laughs) with one finger um, and he's just kind of like, I can't do anything. And, like, when I we even hug, he's like, ow. Like, <laughs> I'm just a very, very strong human Character, being. Yeah. I don't know. But mentally and physically. Um, so you were born in Florida. Yes. You moved to New York. You come to L.A. What was your favorite of those three places that you've lived? L.A. L.A. I mean, so the far. weather here is yeah. just the best. I think it's that. I think, like, I don't know. I was, I was born in Texas, but I did grow up in Florida. Mm-hmm. And, um... Every time I go back there, I always for, have forgotten, like, oh, yeah, this is extreme weather. It's extreme. Yeah, I mean, I, I looked it up. It's like 29 degrees in New York right now. Yeah. And in Florida, it's always, it's always like, 100% humidity, yeah. so you just walk out and you start sweating. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. It's I, When I was a little kid, it wasn't – It never. I never noticed it. And when I was a kid, I lived in New York as well, and then in my 20s, and I never really thought about it. And now when I go back, I'm like, it's mm-hmm. freezing or it's hot. I don't know. I'm just like, I've become a baby. I need to be like in temperature controlled environments at all times. Another <laughs> question coming in. Uh, comedy compared to drama, which one do you like doing better? Um, the most enjoyable is comedy, but I think that it, you know, it goes without saying. I think comedy wouldn't be funny if there wasn't a hint of humanity, and um, along with that comes a lot of drama. And I mean, in our show, we have, you know, nothing is perfect. Like, we, we delve into the, you know, the relationship of Dan and Deb, and although it's very sweet and very endearing and loving, there's also a lot of realistic um, conversations and conflicts. I mean, so, the show even brings up a lot of stuff about America as a whole, because, you know, they had a whole episode about gun control, kind right. of, and how Americans love their guns, and right. so if we take away their guns, it might spark a war. Yeah, <laughs> so. which is exactly what happened. No, I think that it's nice because we're talking about things, but using a very disarming way through humor, making people laugh, and it's... It's not so in your face; like it's more nuanced. But mm-hmm. um, I think that that's the way to reach people. But but like you know, like I was saying, it's I think it's more fun to do comedy. Now another question: Do you relate more to Deb or Blair? Um, and Blair's your character from Gossip Girl. Yes. People, yeah. obviously, everyone knows that. <laughs> I think 
ultimately, I would have to say I relate to Deborah more. I think that she is just a little bit more, um, less, more of an archetype and mm-hmm. a little bit less of a caricature. I think like, um, I, maybe at some point in my life I could relate more to Blair, but at this point I feel like, I don't know, maybe she's a little bit more mature and she's much more kind. So. I and are we going to be her. seeing any Gossip Girl reunions coming up? I know Netflix does a great job and all these different streaming sites are rebooting these franchises. Right. They, well, they do, they do stream the show. Right. So even people that I meet now, they're like 12 and they're like, I love Gossip Girl. I'm like, you were two when it came <laughs> out. Like it came out, you know, when they were a toddler. They definitely shouldn't have been watching it when they were a toddler. So, um, so I think that that's good enough for now. I don't, I don't see a reunion happening anytime soon because I'm busy with this little venture. It's but true. You never know. Um, last thing, what do you want to say to your fans? Obviously, people, tons of people are coming in writing questions. So what do you want to say to them? Let's just find one question. What inspires you? Do you know how much we love you? And do you <laughs> think you'll ever press your album on vinyl? Um, Funny as seem to film. Do you have any plans for a date? For a date? For your second album? Oh. There you go. Um, it keeps moving, so I couldn't. Should I put, like, should I put all this into an answer? Um, I, I just want to say thank you to everyone who uh, is just been the best and most awesome fan, and everyone's so supportive and loving and wonderful. And every time I meet anybody or communicate, and this is an awesome way, um, I just I just love it. I'm so appreciative and happy that all of you guys are. I'm enjoying the new show, and um, yes, I am uh, going to have a second album, hopefully within the next year. Um, and what else? What else did, did they? I ask? think you covered a lot of it. That's I all. Mean, yeah, I mean. Anyway, what inspires me? You. Your fans. Yes. Um, I mean, I think okay, we, the people could be asking millions of questions. <laughs> so, thank you for tuning in. Um, again, if you catch Lynn every Sunday, making history, eight thirty. Fox 11 right here. So tune in. It's a very funny show. You're going to want to see it. All right. Yay. Thank you.